the last time I drank ayahuasca was in January 2013. Um, I've had more recent experiences with smoked DMT in the form of changa. Um, look, I mean, these have been life-changing experiences for me. I've been working with ayahuasca for, well, more than a decade now, since, since 2003. I, I suppose I've had in excess of 50 journeys with ayahuasca. Uh, ayahuasca has caused me to rethink just about everything in my life. My relationships with others, uh, how I function as a human being, my addictions, um, and the, the nature of reality, because, because ayahuasca has, uh, has shown me at the level of experience uh, that this reality that we live in day to day is just one part of a much larger whole, uh, and that we can't possibly get to grips with day-to-day -day life if we don't get to grips with the hidden reality behind it. Um, ayahuasca has brought that home to me in a very, in a very real and compelling way. It's uh, challenged me and uh, healed me on all sorts of, all sorts of levels. I do need to say the reason that I've taken a pause since January 2013, um, and it is a pause, I will be drinking ayahuasca again, um, is, uh, is some, some very challenging experiences that happened in January 2013. I, I believe that ayahuasca is totally a spirit of love. And that, and that it is about bringing love and, and self-realization into the world, and it is waking people up all around the world in, in an incredible and remarkable way. But there is a dark side to it. The dark side is not to ayahuasca itself. Uh, it's a dark side of humanity, and perhaps a dark side in the spirit realm as well. When you open the veil, when you draw back the veil, which is what ayahuasca does, uh, it doesn't only draw back the veil to the forces of light. It also draws back the veil to the forces of darkness. And uh, we as human beings have to be very careful uh, how we function in those realms. And we have to be very clear about intent and about choice, about what we do. Just as there is good and evil in this realm, there is also good and evil in, the, in the, what I would call the spirit world. And that's the role of the shaman. The shaman's role is really to keep those forces at bay. Uh, and it's why I don't urge people to experiment with ayahuasca in their kitchen. Um, I think that we, have a, we in the West need to sit at the feet of shamanic cultures and, and learn from them uh, ways to manage this powerful medicine uh, and, to, and, and, and to benefit from it. And certainly... Uh, no, nobody in their right mind would drink ayahuasca recreationally anyway. It's such an ordeal. Um, but, but I think it has to be approached with reverence, with respect, and in a spirit of love. Um, there, were some, there were some incidents that occurred, which I've described in an article in, in January 2013, which have caused me to take a, a pause. But uh, I will be back. I have more work to do with ayahuasca.